what is going on guys today we're back here with a classic classic video it's been a few days so far of the crown tundra dlc and you know i've been playing quite a few games of ou to where i can now make the top 10 pokemon in the crown tundra dlc tier list yes that's right i'm about to go from the bottom up 10 to 1 and basically show you guys what i consider to be the top 10 strongest mons in ou right now all their sets and uh yeah basically who i think is just the strongest you know some of these guys might even get banned all that good stuff but Yep, I got nothing else to say. We're on showdown right here. So let's just let's just hop into it right here. I got so many different teams that I've been using. Cause bro, I told you I was deleting my whole Gen 8 OU team builder when I when Crown Tundra came out. I deleted every last team because I had to load up all these teams and uh, you know, try everything out. So let's get into it, man. So first we have 10. So before I reveal number 10 to you, the last one, I gotta say this, people. I gotta plug it, bro. Brave browser, three times faster than Chrome. What did my man Shofu say? If you're not using the Brave browser, then what are you? You a coward. Go check that. <laughs> so dumb. Go check that out on my referral code, brave.com slash BLU441. Use it for 30 days. You get paid. I get paid. Best way to support me for free. I appreciate y'all using that. So go check that out. So at number 10, who do we have? Well, we have none other than the king himself, Heatran. Now, we've been waiting on Heatran forever now. Heatran has been a staple in every generation's OU since what generation four it's been at just the top of this shit and it's finally back here now um and people have been waiting on this thing forever think about think about the pokemon that we were so worried about in this metagame rillaboom clefable toxapex corviknight all that stuff has been incredibly annoying to deal with and people were just waiting they were like heatran please come back save us clefable corviknight i just i don't know what to do nothing can trap toxapex help me well, he's finally back, and <laughs> Flash Fire is the best ability, but you can actually run Hidden, uh, sorry, the Hidden Ability Flame Body exists as well. I ran that in my live, I was getting the burn on Mel Metals and stuff, that was pretty funny, but got left. usually I run Leftovers on Heatran, and the number one set, I think, is probably just Magma Storm, Stealth Rock, Earth Power, and then Taunt. Now, I like to go with a bulkier set right now, and the reason being... Um, is because there's just a lot of Naga Nadels and shit, right? And that this is like the main counter that I haven't seen Volcarona one time in this metagame. Ever since Heatran and a real bug like Genesec came back, nobody wants to waste their time with uh nobody wants to waste their time with Volcarona whatsoever. I mean, why would you? Heatran's right here. But this is a pretty great set, I would say. 220 speed is pretty nice. It lets you outspeed 219, which I know is a speed tier. I want to say that's modest Magnezone. Yeah. It's Modest Magnezone and other similar speed tiered stuff. And then 136 Pedef keeps you pretty bulky, lets you take Dragapult's hits, Genesect T-Ball, all that stuff. And then Magma Storm Taunt is basically the, the main point of Heatran, right? Lets you trap all the fatter Pokemon, uh, you know, that would give you a hard time. And yeah, I mean, Generation 7, this was Heatran's most used set. It would Magma Storm, Trap, and then uh, it would dispose of fat teams, and it could really destroy balances very easily. Um, this is a similar set. We have Stealth Rock and uh, what's it called? Uh, Lava Plume, Taunt, Earth Power. So no Magma Storm on this and Air Balloon. Again, it's just a defensive take on it. Having Stealth Rock, Heatran is just really, really nice. It's good to have a Stealth Rocker like Heatran, right? Nobody has ever, nobody's ever said, oh, Heatran's bad at getting up Stealth Rock. Has If anyone's ever said that, they're garbage. They're garbage. Heatran's the best Stealth Rocker ever, all right? Someone's going to go find a battle where you're like, oh, bro, I don't know how to get on my rocks. And it's going to be me with Heatran. I'm going to look like a clown. But look, Heatran has always been one of the best Rockers because he just threatens too much. He's very good at putting them up and he's very good at keeping them up. And I can't say that this is the only Heatran set, right? Because y'all know that Heatran got something special. It got something special here. Eruption. So this set is crazy. This one is Specs, but you can very easily run Choice Scarf as well and give it a Timid Nature. Uh, Eruption Heatran. Just use it in the sun. I mean, you can use it in Weatherless, but it's obviously more fun to use it in the sun. Ooh, bars. But yes, this is Modest Specs. Uh, because of the Nature Mint, you do not have to run Quiet now. Um, or whatever. It is. Yeah, you don't have to run Quiet Nature Heatran. Heatran in the past, you can only run Eruption with uh, Quiet Nature, but now you can make it whatever you want. So Timid Scarf, Heatran, Modest Specs, both of those are very, very powerful picks. Scarf is actually really, really um, strong, especially in the sun. If you don't have Toxapex, nothing really can take the two hits from it, uh, which is really nice. And that's Scarf as well, right? So um, definitely worth trying out. But yeah, Heatran, it has this set, and then it basically has its... Uh, I mean, I'm not going to add the set. You, you basically saw it. So... Heatran with its Magma Storm defensive kind of build, and then it also has options of running Eruption for choice. So Heatran solidly takes number 10. Beating out Magearna and Melmetal. Yes, I'm going to spoil it for you right now. Those two did not even make the top 10. To give you an idea of how powerful this metagame is, those two amazing Pokemon, Magearna and Melmetal, these two are uber. 
remember that they were uber i don't even think they're top 10 right now he trend is better than both of them easy money and i mean he checks both of them too so what can i say but yes mel Moto and magirna uh honorable mentions to them honorable mentions to all the tapus who perhaps could have made this list you know if they got good moves but fuck them so at number nine we have an an agency agent you know a very recently added agent spectre yeah <laughs> so we got him right so this guy is very easily the ninth best pokemon to me um yeah this thing's dropped on the scene the number one set to me is specs shadow ball dark pulse hex uh those are basically your options you can run mudshot and uproar as the last one but honestly i think mudshot is best and then you should probably just run will-o-wisp right because then at least you can will-o-wisp something on the switch so your hex does something later but you can run uproar for the rare beware matchup Ooh, scary yeah i'm telling you this thing's move pulls piece of shit so like what are you even supposed to do right but whatever we'll just go with wisp here um because i've never clicked dark, Pul dark pulse myself and uh i mean unless you're trying to revenge kill what like a a very low hp normal type like what chancy at what eight percent anyway fuck it we got spectre a at number nine on the list and this thing is insane right its special attack is 389 maxed out and its speed is 394 maxed out now, despite there being faster stuff like Regieleki, Feromosa, and all that shit, this thing only needs to click Shadow Ball to win. We're in a metagame right now where Ghost Resists are very low. Stuff like Tyranitar is not on many teams. Why? It loses to Genesect, it loses to Zygarde, it loses to Feromosa, loses to Blaziken, Landorus. Like, bro, you can't you can't be using Mons like that in this demonic meta. What are you what are you doing? So for that reason, nobody's running good, solid dark types to take on Spectre. Yeah. So he's coming in there and he's just destroying all types of teams, right? You look at some, you look at my teams. Look at this team. If I played Specs, Spectre, what am I doing, bro? What am I, bro? It's a wrap. It's a, that shit fucking up everybody. Everyone's dead. So Specs to me is the best set. Um, Scarf is also very good. I like Specs because I'm cheap and I use uh, Sticky Web, uh, which is like a no skill play style, obviously. Grimnade gives you the plus one special attack, so it's, it's a very simple mod to use. Really doesn't take too much skill to use Spectre. A. It's probably the easiest mod ever to use. Um, and then the other set you can run is Leftovers with... I've seen Sub, Shadow Ball, Will-O-Wisp, um, Taunt. And this set's pretty cool because it can, it can kind of deal with uh, bulkier teams. But I don't know. I really... You need plus one to get it popping. I mean, you might as well run Hex at that point. I don't know. You need plus... But, but I don't know. I have only run Choice to Spectre. I haven't even run this Substitute Taunt Wisp set. It has access to Nasty Plot as well. I just think that choice is the best bet in today's meta, right? Like, I, I, or you could run sub, but just for the most part, if you look through these teams, why would you want to take a turn setting up? Like, where are the ghost resists on this shit? Like, even setting up won't help you versus Mandibuzz, right? Like, what will setting up do for you versus Mandibuzz? You're still going to lose. So, in my opinion, it's not even worth messing around with the substitute set, but it is a real set that does work. I just think Specs is the best set, and then Scarf is the second best set. I think Choiced is the best, personally. But Spectre is a very... uh straightforward pokemon this is all you gotta do this guy very cool new legendary one of the new crown tundra guys who i don't know man that thing that thing is seriously good and we're gonna see once the meta they start banning shit we're gonna see just what they do with him but yeah we're gonna put him at number nine look you know clown tundra representative he's, he's easily the number nine best pokemon to me so with that let's move on to number eight now many of you will get scared when you see this that's right, he's still here, he's still in the top 10. This shit, I don't know why the hell this thing hasn't been banned yet, but somehow he's like past the test of time. He doesn't even have a fucking uh, picture on some, on a PS. It's like a black square or a white square or whatever. You're, you're getting smashed by a square every day on the ladder. It's ridiculous. For months, I've been getting my ass beat by this stupid transparent square, and it's in the top 10 again because it's so good. In fact, it's better than both of these kids, Heatran and, uh, and Spectre, they, they, they got no match for this shit. So yeah, Urshifu dark type version is just still the GOAT. I mean, there's only two sets I think are even worth running. Choice Band, which is uh, Wicked Blow, Sucker Punch, Close Combat, and then Jab is the last uh, best one for me. Um, Jolly, but if you really want to be a Dawn, just run Sticky Webs like a, like a cheap guy and run um, Bulk Up. This set, oh my god. This is the set that me and Shofu were destroying everybody with. Bulk up, Wicked Blow, Sucker Punch, Close Combat. Um, Jolly Nature is probably what you should have. But I had Adamant because I was running on Sticky Webs. But yeah, honestly, like, dude, 
this is such a hard mod to beat. Urshifu has fantastic bulk on the physical side, 100, 100. Its speed is, is not the best. 97 is kind of annoying because it's slower than Genesect and shit like that. Um, and slower than Hydreigon base 100s. But it's fine because you can bulk up against a number of stuff like Landorus. Uh, and you can, you know, tank its attack. And the Sucker Punch is really, really strong. Also keep in mind that Sucker Punch is just good in general for stuff like Genesect, which doesn't resist it. Um, and it can pick off a lot of weakened stuff. Yeah, this thing is very easily... Um, number eight to me it's able to smoke offense and it's also able to smoke balance to this day nothing switches into the ship besides clef look at all these teams they'll get fucked up this team will lose to urshifu this team will lose to urshifu if played well like all all of, look at this team where's the dark resist on this hoe just get fucked up super smashed you have to run a zap i mean you have to run a clef that's the only thing that can switch into bandits hits over and over again and right now there's no room to run clefable go ahead and run clefable in a genesect heat trend meta not gonna del meta like it's it's a waste of time um, and that's a and that's a big reason why right now uh, Urshifu is just fucking up the meta. I mean, this thing has always been amazing, top of the meta game, but it's it's damn like it's it's A plus to S rank for me right now. Like I know I didn't even put it at the top because the top seven are better than this, but like I feel like on any given day this thing can be so good. Like it can be so so good. But yeah, put this thing as a yeah urshifu it's it, it can switch the tide of a battle very very quickly and you cannot underestimate that by any means it can it can turn the momentum in a game so fast and it only has to click one move the thing is you always know what it's going to do but you also have to keep in mind that it beats most defensive setup sweepers one-on-one -on -one. like if you if you bring this thing out versus coil zygarde you're blessed right because you can bulk up to plus six let them fucking glare paralyze you it doesn't matter your wicked blow will go through their coil Right? They can't bulk up and, and beat you 1v1. You're just going to want to KO them. They're fucked. So that's the thing. Urshifu is just too too nice at that. Just a really solid Pokemon in general. It doesn't really have to... I mean, Game Freak keeps pushing the limits of bullshit, right? Like a move that crits 100% of the time. And it's this good. Like, <laughs> But Urshifu dealing with that thing it has always been like PP stall and Rocky Helmet and residuals if you can't hit it. So that guy very clearly takes the 8th best spot. Very, very strong pick in today's meta. Now, number 7. Number 7 might surprise some folks, but I have to say the truth about number 7. It rhymes. I'm not even going to tell you what it rhymes with. It's Blaziken, people. It's Blaziken. Yes. Now, you might be screaming right now. You might be punching your laptop. No! Blaziken's the best. How can he be the 7th best? He's the best. He's top 3. No! No, he's he's number 7. He's trash, bro. He's not good in this metagame. He's mid. I'm telling you right now, he's, the, the, the three below I'd literally use before I touch Blaziken right now, which is just crazy. But I have to tell you the truth, that shit is not, it's not hot. Blaziken is not the hot boy he once was, bro. Like, low end, he's not the hot boy he once was. Alright, so, Life Orb right here, speed boost. Right, that's the, that's the given, right? You gotta run, you gotta run Life Orb speed boost. Now, we run physical, because he has to make use of his fighting type attack. So, there's not a lot of leeway with what you run in terms of, uh, in terms of EVs. I don't know why this shit's see why this attacks evs okay anyway so now you go with nature right and this is this is where it already becomes difficult with blaze skin if you go adamant you're slow as a motherfucker at plus one speed you're 388 which is still slower than like everything if you go jolly you hit 426 at plus one which is faster than a couple of things but you're still slow right it's it's very confusing if you go jolly you you outspeed stuff like spectria and uh dragapult and all that stuff but if you go jolly you're weak as shit what is 339 attack i want you to think back go watch the video on either it's on my or Shofu's channel, but plus two Jolly Blaziken did 97 to Pex with Life Orb EQ. Brother, why didn't you kill? Why didn't you kill? Anyway, I'm running high jump kick because I don't run close combat because that's just for losers. No, but you probably should run close combat even though it's for suckers just because there's a whole lot of Spectre right now. So unfortunately, we're just going to go with that pussy pussy move. Um, close combat. I don't like close combat because it doesn't kill what I need HJK to kill. And I think Flare Blitz sucks because you just kill yourself attacking. Like, what's the point of Flare Blitz? You just die. And then you need Life Orb to be strong. This thing is like a fucking self-timing bomb. It just, it's not that good. I don't know. It's its a confusing mod for sure. Um, it really it really just kills itself very, very quickly. And I know it's like, but it's Blaziken. Yeah, in theory, it sweeps a team, but it doesn't. Like, it's, it's very hard. There's a lot of mods that can just take the hit. For example, Tapu Fini can always take the hit um, if you're not running Thunder Punch. That's why Thunder Punch is honestly sometimes better on SD. But here's the thing, you run Thunder Punch, then you're going to be walled by, uh, well, first of all, you can't kill Pex unless you're plus four. Plus two will never kill Pex. Thunder Punch does help versus Pelipper and Feeny, but even those two can live if they're, well, Pelipper always dies, but Feeny can live with Bold. But if you forego Earthquake, um, then, yeah, I mean, Earth, what is Earthquake hit? Oh, yeah, Earthquake is for Pex. And just in general, I mean, I guess it hits Naga Nadel. Um, I guess if you want to consider that, and it also hits Palt. 
right? So th it basically covers all those three in one. So it's just tough. It's just tough trying to find the perfect, uh, like it, it's it's tough trying to find the perfect ground for Blaziken to do as much work as you want. Like look at look, look at a lot of these teams, right? Look at this team for example. Blaziken can fuck this team up, right? In theory, Blaziken would shatter this team, right? But like not really, not really, bro. Dragapult is faster than that thing at plus two easily. It's gonna revenge kill it. Genesect will one hit KO with banded E speed. Yes, yes, its attacks are very strong. But what is the circumstance in which the Blaziken's coming in? Maybe if you U-turn on the Ferrothorn into Blaziken, yeah. If it's 1v1 versus Zygarde, you lose. If it, Even if it's 1v1 versus my stupid Moltres, it's going to lose. If it's 1v1 versus my Zapdos, you're going to Flare Blitz, you're going to take 50% from your own recoil. You're not going to do shit to me, really. you probably do 50, 60 to me. On Vol switching out, you're dead. You're dead. You'd probably take 50. you probably do the same amount with Flare Blitz. you probably do 20% more of Flare Blitz than I do with Vol Switch. And then Genesect or Dragapult picks you off, right? Like, it doesn't even win anything 1v1. And when you think about the fact that Blaziken has 80 base speed and you're not even running protect, how the hell are you even faster than something to threaten it in the first place, right? So now we're going off the point that, okay, well, whatever, we're sitting up in front of a defensive mon. But even these defensive teams have something that can check Blaziken at plus one, plus two, it doesn't matter, right? It's very easy to soft check with some type of priority. Even this team, look at this team, for example. This team, it, it doesn't even have a Scarfer. But I'm really not worried about Blaziken with this shit whatsoever. What the hell is Blaziken doing to this? I have this guy to outspeed him, right? So I'm not worried about that. I have Cart, which will basically kill it with everything. It has to SD to sweep. And even then, it's rare. It's rare that it's going to be able to get all those turns off. Also, Swampert lifts plus 2 CC. But it's, it's I don't know. In theory, it's just the most perfect Mon. But then it just kills itself with all its moves. I am going to say that this set is probably decent. Uh, I think Protect 3 Attack is probably decent. I run High Jump Kick on them myself. Because at that point, you're not even boosting. Just get your damage. Fire Blast, I'm saying, because you're able to tweak KO Clefable without, uh, what's it called? Um, taking Flare Blitz Recoil. You don't want to do that. And Blaziken has a very strong special attack still. And then the last move is likely just to be what? I mean, maybe Earthquake? Maybe Knock Off? Like, dude, that's the thing. It sucks that you can't even Baton Pass with this thing. Thunder Punch? Yeah, bro. Blaziken, oh, it has U-Turn. That is pretty cool. I think Choice Band also has some potential. Choice Band definitely, definitely has some uh, some potential. With, like, this type of set, I know this shit is crazy. Or Knock Off Last. I know this shit is a demon for sure, for sure. Um, in Sun, maybe. But Blaziken, in general, I put him at 7th because he just really is hard to do too much work with. Really. And I know it's hilarious to say. It's like, oh, my God, did he just say Blaziken isn't that good? No, Blaziken's amazing. However, the metagame has changed, and it's not, he's not the Don Dada he once was. I gotta keep it real. He's not the Don Dada he once was. So that's all I gotta say for Blaziken. Let's go on to the sixth best. So, at number six, who do we have? I gotta remember, I gotta refresh my list. Ah, yes. We have an old familiar face, right? So this guy, you got banned as well. Zygarde. Now, Zygarde has do, is just doing the same thing I used to do, right? Like, there's not a lot of variation. I think... It became very obvious what the most broken Zygarde was. Uh, in, in Generation 7, it was very obvious what the most broken Zygarde was. And that's Sub Glare. So, Sub Glare, I probably have a few teams with it, in fact. Let's, uh, let's go to my Zygarde builds. Um, if we go to my Zygarde builds here, we can see, yeah, Sub Glare right here. This one is actually very attack invested and speed invested. Usually, I like to run more of a bulk gear set myself. This one's Choice Banded. Do I have any other Zygarde teams? I have a few, I think. What is this one? Ah, yes. So this is what the serious nature. Whew. Let's make that shit careful. Do all these have natures? Okay, maybe this one just fucked up. Anyway, yeah. So this is like the premier Zygarde you'll see. Thousand arrows glare sub coil. This thing is just it's annoying as hell. Y'all know what this does. It glares and then it one v one Pokemon. It should never one v one. For example, this thing will beat Clefable a lot of the time because Moonblast does like less than fifty. And you glared it and you sub and it's just oof, oof. don't even get me started on the double screens edition of zygarde the one that goes for dragon dance and coil and then has dual screens up and reggie Alecki and coco can set that up and that's what's out thousand arrows and then sub last this thing oh my god this shit is whack this shit is so broken back we used to have the eye of papa berry um that was like broken but now it like got nerfed a little bit but it doesn't even matter that's just still broken as a motherfucker so what are you supposed to do um yeah so honestly this thing you just run like max attack and then you run like some speed 
usually they hit like 255 i mean we're in a new meta game now reggie alecki but i mean that shit's walled so i don't know what the right speed stat to hit is you can find some arbitrary shit i used to just run 255 because i liked having bulk but there's probably some stat and you jack the rest in hp this is strictly for dual screens variants of zygar this shit is so cheap um and then of course we had the specially defensive set uh which i showed let me just what is this one this one yep again specially defensive and then of course we have the final set uh which is just straight choice band choice band is like it's like okay outrage extreme speed thousand arrows what even run his last you run straight up earthquake as last i have a team with the bander so let's check it out toxic yeah i mean it's it's okay right this is a set it's all right it it's cool because thousand arrows is still the move right like it's still the move that you know cannot be switched into but in a metagame with heavy duty boots and shit it's a lot it's a lot less scary than it once was right like when things don't take rocks damage that's a real bitch especially when stuff like slow bro and mandibus come in on you and yeah bandit's okay but i think sub coil is very clearly the goat so we have our bottom five ten through six let's give a round of applause to these five you know making it into the top 10 now we have to go to the real dawns the real these five the next five are who i think are just gonna get banned uh very soon um not that these guys are all gonna stay i mean i could see zygarde and blaziken getting banned for sure um but yeah let's go into it number five who do we have here bro our boy from february bro kiram b oh hell no not this one not this reject this one yeah this all you gotta do is this chief dragon dance uh Skaspiri, fusion boat and then who really cares what you run it really doesn't matter so there's a couple of sets for kiram black you can run life orb you can run uh heavy duty boots heavy duty boots is great right because you can switch into rocks you don't have to really worry about removing those a lot of the time and it's really great for when you're using kiram black on a hyper offense team because you can just give it heavy duty boots and you don't have to worry about clearing hazards and likely you're not going to because you're running an ho team but you can run life orb weakness policy is very good on screens sets uh or screens teams when you have dual screen set up kieran black kieran black is already one of the most bulky pokemon ever right 125 190 that's like insanity but when dual screens are up nothing can kill this in one hit and you're easily able to take super effective attacks too get your plus two attack and then it's usually over on weakness policy the last move is earth power reason being is you're able to take out melmetal and magirna very convincingly um as well as heatran so yeah that's basically why you should run earth power as last there's really I mean, I think Life Orb is like, I think this is just stupid. Like, this shit right here is just cheap. It's so bulky, too. Plus one Fusion Bolt is so strong. It one hit KOs Genesect and shit like that. Um, Icicle Spear being the multi-hit move is also very nice, of course. Get through the cheese. And then, in general, he's just very fast and very bulky, right? The only things faster than him are at plus one are what? Regieleki. What's that shit doing? Ancient Power? So, yeah, you're pretty, <laughs> you're in a good position. Um, honestly, Kieran Black, this is the set I like the most. I don't like to use any mixed life orb roost any anything like that i like dd life orb boots or uh weakness policy i think those those are the ways you go as for your uh last move you can go ahead and jolly i don't know i don't i really don't know what's the best let me look through some of my kiram sets right here and see what i got here yeah so you'll see yeah naive on this one um this is basically a set i told you guys about weakness policy he has coco to set up the screens again reggie alecki can set up screens as well so that's something to think about this is a mixed kieran black with heavy duty boots i really don't think a set like this is viable at all it might seem enticing to run something like this where it's like ooh, mixed attacker i don't understand the point of running this i don't see it wall breaking anything uh really it's also gonna just be weak it's gonna be weak as fuck like this is this is just walled by so much stuff i bet mandibuzz is like beating this 1v1 almost it's just not gonna kill anything it's weaker than regular kieran um not a lot of merit i would honestly always run dragon dance on kiram don't waste your time running any it has 170 attack so just 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 don't be a just don't be a hero don't be a hero run dragon dance like everybody else and get your free w because that's what this mon is it's, it's it's getting banned there's no way this shit lasts i don't understand how it could ever be free in ou it just seems too broken they got to make like a new tier for this thing or just throw it in ubers but yeah i'm not putting another set because i really don't believe in other sets it's dd with these these moves um you can run roost or sub or some other shit if you really want to i just like earth power personally for heatran mel metal and magirna as i said and like i said life orb weakness policy or boots i don't really think an, another i mean there's probably some other shit leftovers but like i don't know those three are the premier items though so that's number five quick 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 we're going on to number four number four number four was today's lander is the focus of today's man landers is beautiful right but despite being so strong so so strong 
there are still three guys that are better than him. But we're going to put Landorus as the fourth best Pokemon. So Landorus' number one move is, of course, Earth Power. We're going to give it max special attack and max speed. Make him timid because Modest, while Modest is so strong, you underspeed other Landorus and just lose to them, which is shitty. So you got to run Earth Power. That's the number one. I like running Sludge Wave, too. Um, you need that for all the fairies and stuff. Let's you break through those very easily. Psychic is seeing a lot of usage right now because it one hit KOs uh, Galar Zapdos and it also lets you two hit KO opposing Landorus very easily. That's honestly the reason I use Psychic just for other Landorus. And the last move is more often than not just Focus Blast to, you know, kill Ferrothorn. Uh, you'll miss this move every single time. If the videos taught you anything, this shit just never hits. But Focus Blast, it's it's the move you do need in the in, as the last. Just to make sure you're not walled by shit like uh, Corviknight. But I mean, you're going to miss. But anyway, yeah, these are the four attacks it usually runs. But oftentimes you don't see it running a four attack set. Usually it's going to forgo one of these for a setup move. For example, I was running this, Calm Mind, three attack. This set was really, really good. Um, but there's a whole lot of things you can run. Let me show you all the different Landorus sets I have on here. Uh, just to give you kind of an, an idea of how many different sets landers i can run so this one i believe is gravity stealth rock this is really cool because um gravity lets your focus blast never miss which is crazy and then it also lets you just earth power everything the only downside of this set is if your opponent has a landers seriously because if they have a landers then it's like oh shit because then they can earth power your ass back so that's the only real problem Landorus is a really good stealth rocker too it forces so many switch ins which makes putting up rocks really really easy i've never had a problem setting those up um yeah it's it, it forces out so many things because it threatens an oko on so many things its bulk is really good too which is annoying it doesn't die to most things crowd on aqua jet won't kill it uh slow bro scald bounces off that shit and it's like it's it's all, obviously it's murdering all these shits back um because he's lander's eye so there's calm mind you can also run you know tech rock polish too um definitely not a bad idea this set is very very strong uh versus offense late game um yeah it's able to just like look at this team for example if I played a rock polish, uh, what's it called? If I played a rock polish Lando, I just lose because my own is walled by it. I like straight up just lose. So something to think about. I want to see what other landers I have. That one was Calm Mind. That one was Stealth Rock. What's this one? This one's CM as well. Sludge Wave Focus Blast. What's this one? Ooh, this one is pretty cool. Earth Power, Sludge Wave, Stealth Rock, Explosion. Explosion was actually pretty cool on this offensive set. So, you know, you can, you can always go as mixed. It, has, it does have 125 attack, which is crazy. You can also use Rock Slide, because Rock Slide gets Sheer Force boosted, so you don't take Life Orb, and you're able to hit Tornadus. So that's just something to consider. And I guess you hit uh, Dragonite, too. This thing used to run HP Ice for other Landorus all the time, but obviously you can't do that anymore. But yeah, Landorus Eye, very, very good Pokemon. Um... I see him likely getting banned. That shit is the GOAT. <laughs> um, one of my favorite mons. I mean, what can I say, man? Life Orb 1.3 times to all your attacks. And then Sheer... So Sand Force? Hello? Sheer Force, of course. So that it nullifies the Life Orb. And then it's also doing another 1.3. It's got all these moves. It's disgusting when you scroll over your Landorus. And then you see Earth Power's 117 base power. Focus Blast is 156 base power. And then Sludge Wave is like 123. And it's just like, why am I using this mon? Why is this allowed? And why is it allowed? Well, we're going to find out in the next few days when they send his ass back to Ground on and Kyogre and all them shit. So, anyway, on to number three. Bzz, bzz, we got my boy, Feromosa. Yes, sir. So, I like Feromosa. Cool Pokemon, you know. It's got This was one of the most epic mons when Gen 7 came out because it was like, oh, shit. The stats are crazy. We got 137 attack. We got 137 special attack. Oh, my God. 150 speed. My Electro can't even do that. Ah, Like, people were losing their minds, bro. And one, even 37, 37 speed F, we were like, this is the best thing ever. It just dies in one hit, blah, 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 blah. And then it gets banned, right, because of Z moves and Beast boost and the fact that its move pulls pretty great. And now we're back in Generation 8, and this shit is still very good. So good that I'm giving it top 3 placement. So, let's go through some of my Pheromosis sets that I have been making use of. So, this is the one set that I have used that I got. Uh, this guy, his name was Gucci Sore. He passed me this team. I think he got number 1 with this. Shots to him. This was a very interesting take on Pheromosa in the first set I saw. This was on his uh, Shuckle Webs team. So, obviously, you need to make sure that... Uh, What's it called? You're able to keep hazards off for opposing webs. And I thought Feromosa with heavy duty boots plus rapid spin was really nice because that way you don't get hit by webs. You always come in at 100%. Feromosa is very, very fast. It resists sucker punch too. 
from her Shifu. So, like, I mean, that's just one priority it resists. It resists Grassy Glide, too. It's able to take a Grassy Glide and a Sucker Punch, for what it's worth. Um, it does resist, though. So, even with its dog shit defense, it can actually tank one. But I really like the ability of Pheromosa to just spin. And in this today's meta right now, where people are running all this HO, lots of Rybombi, lots of Shuckle, lots of the bullshit like that, I really like the fact that it can just spin on command. Uh, and that set was high jump kick and ice beam. We didn't even have a bug move. Um, I guess ice beam you need right now because you have to hit Landorus. And then CC was just the you know quintessential stab move, even if we don't really have too much attack investment. And then Taunt, I really like Taunt. Taunt has helped me a lot. I feel like I click Taunt a lot and I use this on this set as support. Um, but Taunt is just nice for shutting down shit. You don't want anything setting up. What other Moses did I have on this team? Let's see. We had this one, Yup, Heavy Duty Boots. So this one is a physically oriented one with spin, three attacks, and U-turn. Alternative Pheromosas, I'd say, is uh, just running the Life Orb. Life Orb Beast Boost is always strong. You gotta go plus speed right now, because if you go modest or whatever, you're kind of slow. Like, you're, you're slower than a lot of stuff, like Dragapult. So you unfortunately do have to run, um, what's it called? Plus, uh, plus speed. We have Close Combat, Ice Beam are your staples. You can run High Jump Kick too, because, um, I mean, this shit dies anyway. Uh, U-Turn is there. It does get walled by Spectre A, which is something you need to keep in mind. Ice Beam does 40% of that shit if you have max special attack investment, um, but you're walled otherwise, so something to keep in mind. But Pheromos is still a GOAT. It can still, uh, it can still do the Snowball effect very, very easily, like I said. Um, the Life Orb set is very, very good too, so this is the Boots one, but I'll put another set right here. Because there's a couple of things you can do. You can even go Sashed if you're able to keep Hazards off the field. You can do Sash Quiver Dance. This set is not just bad because Toxapex and Z-Moves are gone. I lost to this shit still. I'm not saying it's the best set ever. In fact, it's not as good as Rapid Spin Boots in my opinion at all. But shit like this can still win. You can run You can run the right circumstances for this to be a good Pokemon, right? If you keep Hazards off, you have Tapu Lele, um, HO type build to prevent whatever priority. This type of shit can be pulled off. You can also go with the classic life for close combat bug buzz ice beam you can even run throat chop i've seen throat chop now let's not forget that it has the option drill run which allows you to fuck up pecs and aegis lash which is really cool only problem with this guy is if you want to hit cliff fable you have to run poison jab and it's not worth it you'd rather run um you'd rather run drill run in my opinion i don't think it's uh it's good to run um poison jab this is like an all-out attacker set but here's the thing even if you're running these four attacks you're going to want to run Rapid Spin, because Rapid Spin is just nice to have. Like, a lot of the time, that's how I feel. I feel like I just want to have Rapid Spin, because at least I can just sack it to get off a spin, right? He's fast enough to spin on most shit, but there's a lot of different options of what you can run. Um, but the thing is, as an offensive bug type, he faces just he faces a lot of competition from Genesect, who's obviously above this guy. But, yeah, so we're going to put this guy at three. Um, yeah, Pheromos is amazing, right? It's always, it's always going to be amazing. I wouldn't even be surprised if my boy got banned. But he does uh, he does face some competition from Genesect right now, which is why he's kind of in an awkward place. He's still a go. He's still able to fuck up every single team blindly. Um, but yeah, let's go to number two now. So number two is going to be Naga Nadel. Now, I was actually surprised when I put Naga at number two. I didn't even expect myself to put Naga at number two because it's been so long since I've used this shit. It got banned a couple weeks into Gen 7 or Gen 8. Um, and it was a really cool mon, but it, it, it went by pretty quick, right? So Beast Boost. Um... And the set it runs, well, let's put its coverage moves first. Sludge Wave, Draco, and Fire Blast, right? And then your last move, there's a couple of different options you can run. So if you're running Life Orb Naga Nadeau, which I consider to be the best set, Draco, Sludge Wave, Fire Blast, and your last is just going to be flat, nasty plot. Now, to the untrained eye, this guy's stats looked just pretty good. Like, they're good offensive stats. He's his frail, right? He has all this 73 bullshit. But he has 127 special attack and 121 speed, which is a speed tie with Tornadus. However, because of Beast Boost, it gets plus one speed every time it gets a kill. This thing is obviously really strong too with 127 special attack, and its coverage is crazy. Really, really, really crazy coverage. This coverage is enough to basically shit on everything short of Heatran, right? Heatran, and that's why Heatran even made the top 10, because it's able to check a lot of these guys, especially Naga. But um, if you look through a lot of these teams, you can't really switch into Naga Nadel. I mean, look at them, look at my teams. What can switch into the combination of Draco, Fire Blast? I mean, nothing can even switch into Draco Fire Blast. Sludge Wave is just there for Clefable and Fairies, right? Um, and because it's your dual stab. But Draco Fire, Dragon Fire has always been uh, notoriously perfect coverage, with the exception of Heatran. So yeah, this thing just does what it, what it did and got banned for before. You got to run Timid because you got to get the speed boost so you can uh, just outspeed and fuck up offense. 
Yeah, I mean, it's frail, but it doesn't matter. It still gets off good opportunities to nasty plot. It's actually uh, has a great typing, too. Poison Dragon is actually really cool. Um, scares out shit like Rillaboom instantly. It has really easy opportunities to nasty plot. I'm not even going to lie. Um, I think this thing is really easy opportunities to nasty plot. I think it's going to get banned as well. I don't think this thing is going to last. This shit's so broken. Um, and the other set I wanted to talk about was instead of nasty plot, you run spikes. You can also run toxic spikes, but I prefer spikes myself. Spikes is cool, man. This thing has a very Greninja-like feel to it. If you guys remember when I'm talking about Greninja using Protean spikes or uh, Ash Greninja spikes, this thing definitely has a, a Greninja feel. It gets the beast boost too. And it can just be a late game sweeper, but it can also set up spikes, right? And it, it forces quite a few switch-ins to where I think this set is very cool. My boy Mimmo passed me this cool team with Naga. See, this team, for, this, this number one HO had, had Naga, classic nasty plot set. And even he had Timid, of course, because... You need to take advantage of that. What was this one? Heavy duty boots. So this one was pretty cool as well. Let's Naga come in and not take hazards damage. Of course, it still gets outsped and KO'd by stuff like Dragapult, so it's not perfect. But because of Beast Boost and just the combination of its perfect move pool, literally perfect move pool and five move, moves, five moves, it has a perfect move pool, right? This is really all you need. You don't you don't really need to fuck around with anything else. And I mean, this thing's move pool is great. He has like good moves like T Bolt and, and like T Spikes and shit like that, but. It's not even worth it. It's not even worth it. So not gonna do. Very clearly stays number two. I believe he will also get banned alongside three, four, and five in due time. But with that, let's go to everyone's favorite number one. It was so obvious this was gonna be Genesect. Genesect Kuto, bro. What do I gotta say? Let's make that boy shiny. Give him a choice ban and talk about why this shit has to get banned. I mean, it's gonna get banned. I thought it get banned by today, but I guess they're waiting a few days. I assume it's gonna get banned in the next two or three days because I don't understand why it would last. But yeah, this is the best set in the metagame. It's just banded. There's no point running. I mean, no, I'm not going to say there's no point running anything else because there are other good sets. But banded is just straight up broken. Nothing can beat banned. It's just broken straight up because of U-turn. You can go into your Mons like Corviknight, which died a Blaze Kick, or you can go into your Heatran, which in theory beats it, but it'll just forever U-turn on you. Um, and that's why it's fucked. E-Speed is also like the crux of this set. Like, bro, if you go Adamant, you hit 837 attack, I believe it was, and if you go Jolly, you hit 762 attack, so you're basically at, like, these insane levels of attack, 70, 762 versus 839, like, why, why is a Pokemon coming out at that level when it gets the plus one attack, and a lot of people be saying stuff like, oh, you overrate it because it's not like Genesect always gets the attack boost, no, it more often than not does get the attack boost, um, that's just how the meta is, like, it usually does get the attack boost, and if it doesn't get the attack boost, then what, it's gonna get the special attack boost, and you better hope, you better hope to God he's banded. You better hope he's banded if you get a special attack boost. Otherwise, oh lord, you're taking those ice beams. You're taking those T-Bolts. You're taking those flamethrowers. And then you're thinking, oh bro, he's special. I can go into my Clefable. No, bro. I was about to type in Clefable. You, you, you can flash cannon. Go on. All right, you can run a fully special set too. That's not even scratching the surface, bro, because you can also run this guy as a Scarfer. And everyone knows that this is every noob's favorite Scarfer because it's the best fucking Scarfer ever. Because download is so, so good. Dude, this thing is a blast. There's nothing more fun than using this mod, truly. Um, it's the most fun mod ever. Like, it, it is. So, on this team, I have what? Banded with Zen Headbutt for Pex. This team, I have... Yo, Banded. Most of mine are Banded, just because it's like a brainless auto-win strategy. Man, where are my non-Banded ones? I look like such a fucking scrub right now. only use Banded. What is this tryhard shit? Uh, where's my Life Orb one? Right, so this, is, this one's Life Orb 3, uh, 4 attack, which is cool. Um... Banded again. Damn, bro. Is this me? Scarf. Okay. I got any rock polish ones? Banded. Damn, bro. I'm disappointed in myself. But, hey. Oh, this one was Douse Drive. Right, right, right. Douse Drive is... Because I was like, dude, I have to have another one. Rock polish, Douse Drive. This set is very cool. Technoblast, T-Bolt, Bug Buzz, Rock Polish. Do not sleep on this set. Rock, uh, Technoblast is 120 base power special move. And it allows you to really mess with Heatran. Right? Um, and that's, that's basically the main point. Unless you hit Heatran, and you also are able to hit ground types in general, so you don't need the Ice Beam coverage. Don't sleep on that set. Douse Drive is really cool. Everyone's going to their Heatran on this. But, yup. I mean, Genesect is number one, right? I can't, I can't deny him. He's a GOAT. And this is basically our top ten, guys. In order, we got Genesect, Naganadel, Faramosa, Landorus, Kiram B, Zygarde, Blaziken, Urshifu, Spectrier, and Heatran. So, pretty good top ten list. Let me know in the comments below uh, what you guys thought, what your personal, best, worst, whatever it is. If you thought stuff like Mel Metal and Magearna deserve to be in the top 10. I'm going to give you guys this. I'll leave you with this. I think that Genesect is going to get banned this week. I think Naganadel is going to get banned at the end of the week. I think Mosa and Landorus, I think, are are next up. I think 
I think Genesect and Naga will be the first two banned. Genesect is for sure going to get banned this week because there's no way it could survive. Naga and Adele is broken, but we'll see what they decide. Mosa and Lando are probably broken, but maybe they'll wait a week or two. And I do think Kiram and Zygarde will inevitably be revealed as broken too. And then Blaziken should be broken at some point, but I don't know. Anyway, the top seven should be banned, uh, but I think Genesect and Naga are going to be the first to go. That being said, again, let me know what you guys thought. I had a blast making this video. Catch y'all soon. Peace.